Hey there, YouTube friends. How are you today? I'm Susan Smith. You are in my studio, Stitched by Susan. Thanks so much for joining me. It's a Monday morning for me. I'm in the Pacific Northwest, so it's about 8.30 in the morning and the sun's just coming up. Those of you who've been on the last few days know that I have this lovely row of maples on my street. Um, they're so beautiful. They're red right now. And when the sun is coming up in the morning and shining through them, they're so gorgeous. So that's what I'm seeing out of the corner of my eye. You all tune in where you're joining from. It is so great to see you all. Michelle, I might make it for the whole live today. Whoop, whoop, good for you. And Lissa from sunny and chilly Colorado. It's probably chilly here too. I haven't actually been outdoors yet. Carlene in Boise, Elaine, another quilty day. Awesome. Peggy, um, Debbie Fleming in Wisconsin. Jana, who I know is in Spokane like I am. Diana, so good to see you all. I have a fun topic on tap today. I don't know how many of you saw Taylor Swift and her pictures of her dress at her premiere that she just attended on. I think it was just on the weekend. I don't even know what date it was. I've just been so busy looking at the pictures. Anyway, she wore this gorgeous quilted gown. It was amazing. So that got me thinking about quilted garments. So that's what we're gonna talk about a little bit today. I'm seeing Laura and another Susan and Janice and Anne and Lorene and Mary and Winona. So good. Okay. Uh, first off, let me tell you this. We're on YouTube and I'm coming on live each and every day for a full month. It's actually going to be more than 30 days. This is day 21. And just talking about machine quilting related topics. So every day is different. They're casual. They usually have to do with what I'm working on or what I'm thinking about that day or questions sent in by you, the viewers. So if you have topics that you'd like us to discuss, feel free to email me, susan at stitchedbysusan.com. And I'll do my best to get that on the list. Of course, we've got like 12 days left now. So quilted garments. Is that even a thing? How do you go about it? Well, if you've been on social media at all the last six months or a year, you know quilted coats are a thing for sure. Quilted coats are cropping up everywhere, all kinds of designs and patterns and ideas, but mostly, number one, people are creating them from already made quilts and they're cutting them up to create these coats. Uh, or they're kind of a um, boxy overcoat sort of style. Like, what am I thinking? Kind of an L.L. Bean sort of style, you know, a thigh length or and with a hood, but just kind of a boxy shape as a rule. And, you know, you don't think of quilting as lending itself, something that's quilted, it's thicker. You don't think of it as lending itself to shaping. But of course, Taylor Swift's dress taught us differently, but actually I already knew differently. So let me tell you my story of a quilted coat. So it began with, you guys have a look at this. This is a vintage pattern that was my mom's McCall's and it was printed in 1954. And look, it doesn't even close anymore. All It's broken around all the bits. And this little coat, it's a size 12 girls. And I remember this being in my mom's sewing supplies all the years I was growing up. And I love the look of this coat and I always wanted one and she never made me one. So when I got quilting, and this is a few years back already, I thought I wanna make that quilt and I wanna try it with quilted fabric and see what I can do. So I took this original pattern when I opened it up, though it had never been made, like the pieces were cut apart but not cut around, there was a missing piece, a collar. So this is part of the story. This is what I had to go through to get it done. I have pattern number two in a child size eight. I actually went on Etsy and found this pattern in the UK and bought it so that I would have a collar that would fit. You know, certain things I might've been able to fudge. I don't know what that would have been. You know, I'm thinking facing or front or sleeve. Now I really needed all those pieces. So even though this other one is a size eight and my original was a 12, it was close enough that I was able to gauge the curvature and just use my collar piece out of this one added to my original pattern to make this coat. So here is the coat. Of course, I, I cannot show you the whole thing. There's just no way on camera, but you get kind of an idea. It's got that very 50s, definitely princess lined shape. And I use this black, I don't know if you can see it, it's kind of an embossed velvet for the collar and for the little welt pockets that are in the sides. And this is the part I love. Look at the lining. I love that lining. And by the way, it just came from Joanne's Fabrics. It is not a high price lining, 
but it's 100% poly, so it feels like a lining and it's a beautiful weight. And so it's, you can see the corner down here, like I finished that whole thing. What you may not know about me is once upon a time I was a garment sewer. So I, this is stuff that comes fairly easily to me. I know how to inset sleeves. I know how to put in facings. I know how to um, create princess line seams and trim them and press them so they lay flat and all that stuff. So from that point of view, making the coat was, was a walk in the park. It was a bit time consuming, but not too difficult. But I was so thrilled to see that quilted fabric makes a great coat. So let's look for a sec at the comments before I go into, I'll give you a few details of how I did it. Mary Winona, that's where we were. Angela, good morning from Alberta. At work slash on coffee quilting this evening. I love that. Carolyn, Donna, Yannicka, passion fruit. Hello from Janet in Muckleteo, Washington. I know right where that is. Kathy, uh, Lisa, that's gorgeous. Elaine, so beautiful. Yes, yes. Mary, looks like a coat. So many English la ladies would wear. Reminds me of Princess Catherine. Truly, it does. And I think the reason why is 50s styles were so classic and so feminine. And that's the way that she dresses, right? And so there, it, yeah. And she does wear a lot of coats that have those sort of princess lines. So let's talk just a little bit about its construction. Initially, I had this red fabric and I don't know if I can show you the inside of it. Not very easily. Ah, I need more hands. This is the inside of the red fabric right here. So I purchased the thinnest, lightest weight muslin I could find and I literally quilted yardage of the red fabric with this edge to edge. It's a plume design. It's actually the same one that I quilted on the Friendship Quilt if you were watching my live and unscripted last Friday. So very same design. And I just literally quilted yards of it. And then at that point, I just treated that as my outer fabric and then, you know, sewed a lined coat with a collar and cuffs and pockets and so forth. Oh yeah, covered buttons. Did we talk about those? Also covered in the velvet. I love them. Welted pockets. Can you see that? I'm uh, not pockets, uh, buttonholes. Welted buttonholes. I'm quite, quite proud of those. <laughs> anyway, that was my essential process was creating quilted fabric and then making this coat. From there, of course, my head starts, starts jumping. I created this red one several years ago already. And ever since then, I've been thinking, okay, now I've got this child's coat. Now I want a coat for me. And I've vacillated back and forth between, you know, doing a princess coat like this again, because I do love that silhouette. That princess shape is so, so pretty. And I actually do have a pattern for it. I have not yet done it. But for this red one, I did this all over quilting design, right? On the whole yardage. The idea that I have now that I'm thinking of trying for myself in the very near future is to create something that's got specific quilting. So it's got like a border element on the coat. As you can imagine, that brings some logistical problems because it's going to be curved. So initially my first try, and I don't think I have the pattern here, so I can't even show you that. It's like a swing coat, which is flared, but doesn't have necessarily the hourglass waist shape. It more flares from the shoulders, but does have a curve on the bottom, does not have all the seam lines that a princess coat would have. So I think that's gonna be my first try, and I'm gonna see if I can create a curved uh, border type design, build a border with several different designs and then do a fill from there on up and make my quilting basically be custom to the shape of the coat. So for that one, then my process is going to be, I'll get my yardage of fabric and lay it out and cut out my pattern pieces out of the, out of the pattern itself and lay them on and I'll trace out the shapes with, you know, probably two inches or so of um, excess all around. And then I'll quilt I'll probably quilt the yardage still, but I'll lay specific quilting inside the shapes of the front and back of the coat, the hem lines, for example. And then after it's quilted, of course that does make it shrink up a little bit. So then I'll come back and using that excess that I built in, I'll then cut out those pieces and sew the thing together. So we're gonna see how that turns out. You know, check in for updates. I have a question for you all, but let's take the comments first. Uh, do to do to do, do so pretty. Sally, the coat's beautiful. Yes, I do do love the coat. Uh, Maggie, sewing my butterfly quilt top by Tula Pink. Awesome! I love that quilt. I have made it and want to do it again. If only there was more time. 
Anna's is asking, did you quilt on a long arm or a domestic machine? I did it on a long arm, but you certainly could do it either way. In some ways, it would be not too difficult on a domestic machine because you're quilting yardage. You could literally start at one end and just work your way down the yardage. As I recall, I did five yards of 60 inch wide fabric. So it was a bit of quilting. It was bigger than most quilts. Mary, we'll hate for your daily vids to end. They've been great. I'll do it again, Mary. I will do it again, I promise. It's, yeah, it is a time commitment, so I only promise a month for now. Janice is saying maybe use a medallion fabric for the quilt. Oh, that would be an interesting thought, Janice. You would get a real, a specific medallion look like, say, across the back of the shoulders or the back of the hem. That is that is very interesting. I do have the fabric for my next one already, and it's not medallion style, but that's a great idea. Why don't you try that one, Janice? <laughs> Lauren, I have no doubt that you can do the coat with the curved edge. I hope so, Lauren. I, I'm sure I will get something for a result. Will it be what I'm seeing in my head? You know, I'm just absolutely not sure. And I was going to come back to that and I now forgot entirely what I was going to say. Oh, I know what it was. The question I was going to ask of you guys is this. I've talked a few times about the fact that I'm in the middle of launching my freehand quilting masterclass. Um, next week, well, Saturday, the cart will be opening. Enrollment will be opening for the next knot of quilters. So of course I'm dealing right now with lots of paperwork and emails and responses and forms and all the things that go with that registration process. Am I crazy to think I could quilt a coat this week too? I know I am, but it kind of lights me up. And sometimes I feel like you just need to do the things that light you up. It makes the other things that you're doing better. I don't know. Uh, Daisy making a seat cover for Chevy. That's awesome. A quilted one? There's just no limit to the things you can do with your quilting, right? Certainly lots of us have made quilted cushions. Um, like what else could we do besides quilted coats? But circling back around to what I started with, which was Taylor Swift's quilted dress at her recent premiere, if you haven't seen any photographs of it, I encourage you to look it up. You can just Google Taylor Swift quilted dress and it'll come up, I guarantee you. It's blue and it's gorgeous. It was made by, I think, Oscar de la Renta, um, designer for sure. And it is, is stunning. So of course now I'm thinking, huh, I wonder if I could do a quilted dress too. So maybe, maybe that'll be next year's project, who knows? Diana, I've wanted to quilt myself a coat, but a lot of time if it doesn't fit right. You're absolutely right. So a couple things. Number one, you might want to make it first in an inexpensive fabric to make sure that you've got a fit. Or in the case of my swing coat that I'm looking at, it's not very fitted at all. It's just, it hangs from the shoulders, right? And so starting with the right size at my shoulders is key and sleeve length is key, but easy to adjust. But in terms of the coat itself, it's just flowing. And so there's not a particular careful fit. Teresa, I'm sure you could do it. Thanks for the vote of confidence. Daisy, what's your favorite thing you've quilted? And Lissa, yes, do the thing that lights you up, make the coat. You know, I'm kind of leaning that way. I have one or two projects that I must get done for people that have deadlines, but it also just really powers me through those things, right? When I've got this carrot dangling of something really, really fun that I really want to do. Um, just watched an MSQC video with Misty. That's a Missouri Star Quilt Company. And she made an ottoman with a quilt. Oh, that's a great idea too. It just adds so much texture. Okay, back to Daisy's question. What's your favorite thing you've quilted? Someone referred earlier to Tula Pink's butterfly quilt pattern. I think that ranks right up there. That was one of the early, um, very custom, very creative things that I quilted. So I don't have it here today. I can't hold it up in front of you, but you could probably find pictures. I, a week or two ago, I posted a little reel that had me laying a whole bunch of quilts in a layer on the floor. It's in that clip. There are the videos too. But this Tula Pink Butterfly is a huge, like an 84, 86 inch square quilt with a big butterfly, bright saturated colors, and it's sampler style, the blocks. And then there's quite a lot of white negative space background. So I just went crazy in that negative space background. I kind of planned in the, the antennae that went up from the butterfly and that was curving feathers. And beyond that, I started at the top of the quilt, freelancing kind of graffiti quilt style. And I went to the bottom. I added in feathers here and there and motifs here and there and bubbles here and there. And it's just very organic and creative. I loved doing it. I loved what I learned while I was doing it. And that quilt has been an 
eye popping. Like every time I've ever displayed it anywhere, it's the showstopper. It always, always is partly because of the colors and partly because of the quilting. So Tula gets some of the credit for that because the colors are all due to her. So there's that. Um, yeah, again, if you haven't seen Taylor Swift's dress yet, go and look it up because it will inspire you like crazy. It's absolutely beautiful. She does have a lot of class. She really does. And hats off to her for wearing something so unique and different. And I, and I love it. I love it. Okay, let's see what else. Uh, Lauren got that one. Catherine, go ahead. It'll be fun. Elaine, I love the swing coat idea. Would love to see your pattern. I, I'll show the pattern at some point as I'm working on it. I'll show some progress videos. If not here, then in my in my regular posts. Um, the pattern designer, I met her at a, at a quilt show. So she's kind of, would you call that an indie pattern designer? Just an independent one. So that's where I got the pattern and I'll share that because she deserves a, a share and a mention too. Michelle, I made a wedding veil for my daughter, loaded washaway stabilizer instead of backing, no batting, and floated tulle and stitched a flower and ribbon all over and a feather border. That is a great idea, Michelle. That is a great idea. You should seriously post that all over Pinterest. Take like 20 photos of it and make 20 different pins, detail, close, you know, far away with your daughter and whatever, and post that thing And because lots of people would think that's a wonderful idea. Daisy, I'd love to see how you make jackets out of a quilt or yeah, I've never done it actually, but there are lots of people who have. So Michelle came in late this morning. Your coat looks great. Well, let me show the coat again in case you're just tuning in. And while I do that, if you're enjoying these episodes, please give them a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and click the little notification bell if you want to be notified when I'm, whenever I'm going live and it's every day for a full month. This is day 21. Okay, here's the coat one more time. So it's very princess lined. You can see the seams there. It's got the, the welt pockets. I can get my hand right in there if I wasn't standing at such an awkward angle. Got a gorgeous poppy lining. I love the lining. The covered buttons, the welt pockets, and the collar are all this soft embossed black on black lightweight velvet, super cute. That's the finish. It has traveled, actually, this little coat has traveled North America. Uh, I think it's been in three or four quilt shows and it has always gotten a ribbon, not always first. Um, there were a few things that I learned about technique when I was doing it and I actually got some good feedback from the judges. So that was helpful and I will take that forward into my next coat. So we'll see what transpires. All right, you guys, I am going to head off to today's quilting session. I'll let you know what I decide on the coat. And whatever you're doing today, make it a great day, and I will check in with you tomorrow.